Target acquired. Oh no, let let them pass. It's just it's just another beautiful face grace in this channel once again. Hello again, friends. Today we are running up the buttress of Anolondo and trying to avoid these fuckers trying to pick you off from a distance. It is, of course, the Silver Knights of Anolondo. And engage in jolly cooperation. We are already at episode seven in this series. Boy, how time flies. And that means there's only two episodes left of this series. How exciting. The giveaway is still running until the end of it, so stick around to find out how to enter. And here are the original Silver Boys that I did last year, and these were actually the very first minis I ever painted. And as you can see, the swords have warped over time, they only have two colours, and they haven't fared well since. The same goes for the archers, same colours, same warping. I don't think they're going to be hitting anything anytime soon with those bendy ass arrows. So we're going to start off by getting these six big boys primed with some black. Then following suit with some of the other repainting videos, I'm going to kickstart it off with some zenithal highlighting and I'll be doing it first on the swordsman. You know how it goes, high up angle, spraying down with whiting, creating a light source point on the mini and then doing the exact same for the archer. What I'm doing is loading up some paint to a wet palette, Corax white, administratum grey, Etian grey and finally some Abaddon black. Then I'm creating these vertical strokes going down the armour on the sides, ranging from the whitest to the darkest in this sort of staggered bounce effect. Then just using mid-tones of the greys to blend between the lightest parts to the darkest parts. For a more detailed description about using non-metallic metal styles, you can check out my video on the Dancer of the Boreal Valley, one that I'm really proud of how it came out, and I go into way more depth about it. It's all about breaking down the shapes you're painting into basic primitive shapes like spheres and cubes and cylinders and replicating how light would reflect off of them. I'll pretty much just be utilizing this exact same method across the armor as it's all the same color and style. I'm gonna be very honest with you all here. This is my third attempt at painting these models. I've had a bit of a torrid time trying to paint them. I don't know what's been going on. My head's not really been in it and the more it kept going wrong, the sort of more defeated I was feeling with painting these guys and it got to the point where I genuinely thought I might just not release the video because I just was not happy with how these guys were coming out. Even on this third attempt here, I'm still not 100% happy with how they came out, but the thing is, is that not releasing the video kind of defeats the point of why I started this channel, you know, like, not every model was going to be your best one. Not every model is going to be perfect. You know, it's everything's a learning curve. Every every time you're painting a model, you're learning new things and making mistakes is the only way you're going to learn. Because I'm not perfect. The models I paint aren't perfect. And sometimes some will be better. Sometimes some will be worse. So that's why I'm progressing with it anyway. Hopefully that makes sense. Sorry for rambling. So saying that, what was your first go-to method when you were going up that buttress? Is that the right word, buttress? That sort of ramp? Let's, let's say ramp for now in case buttress is completely wrong. Like, when you're running up that ramp for the first time just getting absolutely blasted by these archers, what was your go-to method to get past them? I don't, genuinely, I don't think I've raged as much at Dark Souls 1 more than these guys. It genuinely infuriated me beyond belief. Genuinely, it felt like I was on Takeshi's castle and just getting punked. You know when they're crossing the wire? <laughs> <You know? laughs> and they've got the helmets on, and I think they're carrying something, and then there's people with cannons and just shooting shit at them. Oh man, that show was so good. Um, yeah, I've seen people like equipping great shields in both arms and kind of like like turtle tanking it up the ramp and blocking the arrows and then taking out the guy on the right before going on the left. On a scale of one to 10, who's more annoying? The Silver Knight archers here or the little poison sniper fuckers in Blighttown? It's a close call. <laughs> I'm also going over the edges of the armor and the arrow with some white to do some edge highlighting and also creating this kind of checkered style on the arrow where you've got white and black blocks next to each other and blending between them and you should have a relatively cool looking sort of reflective style and then just refining the edges of the shoulder plates with some white to tie it off nicely. 
For the cream colored capes, I'm gonna start off with a thin base of more cast bone and just cover the cape entirely. Keeping it thin, you should be able to see the shadow job underneath still. And then for shadowing, just mix in some Mournfang brown at the bottom and blend up. Then take some Rhinox Hide at the very bottom for even more shade and just blend upwards again. For the bow, I'm gonna dry brush on some gold, leaving gaps in between the gold so we can allow for some shading a little later on. And to create the gold shadows, I'll mix in some Rhinox Hide again and fill in the gaps between the gold and blending between them. Then for some gold highlighting, I just want to use some Alric Gold just to dry brush onto the little details of the front. And with that done, I'll call it a day on the Archer. For the Swordsman, I'm gonna be doing the exact same stuff as they have the same design. And the only difference being is they'll have silver swords and silver shields instead of a gold bow, obviously. But just following the same method of highlighting and shading across the armor on the swords and shields, and it should give the same look. I won't bore you by going through all of it again so we can just get straight into the comparison and the fun, 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 fun giveaway. So with the swordsmen painted up, it's time to take a look at them. The main difference you can see here is the straightness of the arrow, you know, which is always nice, but also a bit more dynamism to the armor. Once I've got it all varnished, we'll start to see a bit of shine to it. Same again for the swordsman. The old one is just coated in a layer of lead belcher and null oil, and the new one has a bit more going on with it. But like I said before, you know, these ones, I still think they're an improvement on the original ones, but sometimes when your head is not 100% with it, it's, it's better to just sort of take a step away and then come back at it at a later date. But anyway, that's the whole point of this channel is that, you know, I, I want to show the imperfections, you know, along the way. Not everything is going to be perfect and, you know, you learn from them. So all that aside, it's time for the giveaway. As explained in the previous repainting videos, on Sundays I'll be releasing a new video as part of the repainting series, and by the end of it we will have a fully painted collection of the board game set. This is the prize, this exact and complete Dark Souls board game painted by me. To enter all you have to do is make sure you're subscribed to the channel and leave a comment below answering this week's question. I will be picking a winner from the comments across all videos in the repainting series, so the more videos you comment on, the more chance you'll have to win. So for this episode, I would like you to comment below and tell me your favorite Souls-like game that isn't a From Software title. Would it be something like Neo, Soul and Sanctuary, Hollow Knight? You know, whatever it is, tell me below. It's actually kind of helpful to you know, be good to get some new recommendations for games. But as ever, gang, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I tried to go a bit more sort of honest and open with things. If you did like it, please, you know, drop a like. Hit the subscribe button as well, it really does help the channel grow and reach new people. Also click that bell to turn on notifications while you're at it so you get updated the moment a new video drops. But as ever, thank you for spending your time with me and I will see you all in the next one. Peace out gang, and don't you dare go hollow.